Welcome everyone to my channel. My name is Andel and I'm an author and storyteller. Today's original story is the second chapter of Nyx. Not available for purchase yet, but I thought I'd give you a preview. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this with anyone who might love this content. I post stories weekly, so stay tuned. Please feel free to comment me and leave your suggestions down below to improve this story. So grab a glass of milk and your favorite cookie and sit back and relax and enjoy this tale. Chapter 2 I stirred, gradually emerging from the haze of unconsciousness, only to find myself sprawled on a bed that seemed to defy the very concept of comfort. The sterile scent of antiseptic assailed my nostrils, cutting through the grogginess with a sharp tang. As my senses started to sharpen, a symphony of sensations unfolded around me. The distant hum of intricate machinery orchestrated an eerie melody, creating an unsettling harmony in the air. Blinking against the harsh brilliance radiating from the ceiling, I became acutely aware of the clinical setting enveloping me, an operating room bathed in an unnatural, sterile glow. Panic surged within me, like a wild current, as I desperately scanned my surroundings, hungry for answers that remained elusive in the cold atmosphere. Where's father? I wondered, the memory of fainting in his lap, flooding back, clutching where my paralyzed arm would be. I was stunned to find it replaced by a different material. Gasping, I held up my metallic left arm, the beautiful creation resplendent in white and gold, its limbs and fingertips sparkling in the room's bright light. I almost burst into tears. My father fixed me, I thought. I sat up excitedly. Still in a daze, the room spun for a moment, but as clarity set in, my eyes darted downwards. What I saw sent shivers down my spine. One side of my body from head to toe had been transformed by gleaming white and gold, intricate robotics parts. In my bewildered state, my gaze shifted to a bed placed beside mine. The curtain separating the beds was pulled back, revealing a human boy in his late teens, lying motionless, connected to an array of monitors. His disheveled brown hair contrasted sharply with the sterile white sheets, and his eyes were closed, as if oblivious to the bizarre transformation we both shared. My heart skipped a beat. I didn't even know him. Yet I felt an inexplicable connection, a connection beyond wires and circuits. He's so handsome. I couldn't help but muse. Intrigued, I swung my legs over the edge of my bed, the metallic joints of my robotic limbs emitting a faint whirring sound. The invention sank so smoothly with my other natural leg that I walked gracefully to the boy's bed without waking him up. Approaching him, I took in the sight of his right side replaced with black and light gray robotic parts. My father had assembled him, but the sudden call to repair this beautiful boy puzzled me. I winced at a scar that was across his only natural cheek. Hopefully he didn't fall out of a window, too. I couldn't help but notice a meticulously detailed chart resting on a clipboard that had been carelessly left on a small table beside him. Intrigued, my curiosity peaked, and I couldn't resist the urge to clutch the information and unravel the story behind this compelling individual. With a delicate touch, I flipped through the pages, determined to unveil the tale of this captivating young man. As the pages whispered a narrative of pain and adversity, I discovered the heartbreaking account of what he'd experienced, severely injured and paralyzed on one side, a casualty of a harrowing car accident. The perpetrator, a faceless and unidentified figure, callously collided with him and fled the scene before facing any consequences, leaving this patient in a state of physical and emotional turmoil. A wave of empathy washed over me. Poor thing, I thought to myself, my heart sinking at the injustice that had befallen him. Gently, I returned the clipboard to its rightful place, wondering the untold chapters of his life that had led him to his vulnerable state. As I leaned in a little closer to examine him, his LED lit and natural eyes fluttered open, revealing a gaze mirroring my bewilderment. My heart leaped, and my first impulse was to dash away, but I couldn't tear my eyes from his. His natural eye held a realm that captivated my soul, and the dark green color was unlike anything I'd seen before. My palms began to sweat. Goodness, why am I so attracted to him? To my surprise, he seemed equally captivated. We locked eyes, unable to break the gaze. I decided to end the silence. Hello there, shiny new human, I teased, my voice a melodic blend of laughter and genuine curiosity. I wasn't sure how you would respond. 
His expression remained almost lifeless. Finally, a playful smirk formed on his face. Greetings, fellow carbon-based life form. I must say, you have an impressive upgrade. My laughter burst forth, filling the room with a contagious echo that resonated with a vibrancy I had never experienced before. The sound, like a symphony of mirth, reverberated against the walls, creating a lively atmosphere that seemed to dance with the sheer delight of the moment. As my amusement echoed through the air, I noticed him joining in, his chuckles harmonizing with mine, forming an amusing duet that added an extra layer of joy to the room. His laughter, a marvelous melody of shared amusement, mirrored my own, and in the harmonious moment, the ordinary became extraordinary. Well, you're not looking too shabby yourself, Mr. Binary Heartthrob, I continued the teasing. We're like the bionic dream team now. He grinned, sitting up with a confident air. It's not Mr. Binary Heartthrob, though. The name sticks. What about you? I assume it's not Miss Metallic. Giggling, I took a seat on my bed, positioning myself across from him. I've never heard that name. It's unusual. I'm Nix. Nix. That's a cool name. Styx exclaimed, his enthusiasm evident. However, his smile quickly faded, and he shifted uneasily in his spot, his eyes darting nervously around the unfamiliar surroundings. What? What happened to me? He asked, his gaze now focused on his robotic arm as he clutched it with his human hand, feeling the smooth texture of the reflective surface. I nodded slowly. Well, I found out from the clipboard on your bedside table you were terribly hurt on one side of your body, causing numbness and inability to move. It seems the car crash was quite severe. He shivered, a sense of unease washing over him. Even though that was a dreadful night, I have only fuzzy memories about it. It's just so hard to remember. All I can recall was being crashed into and blacking out. What happened to you? Chuckling nervously, I recounted my own ordeal. I fell out a window. The thief was rummaging through my father's things when I caught him. In his rage, he thrust me out a window, and I lay paralyzed in the ground below. Yeesh, that sounds scary, Styx remarked, clasping his hands together as he reflected upon my words. His gaze shifted between the floor, me, and then the monitors, creating a momentary silence. Eventually, he mustered the confidence to look me straight in the eyes. Styx extended his ha natural hand toward me, his fingertips dancing in my direction. Care for a dance in this post-operative wonderland? A mischievous grin formed on my face. Why not? I've always wanted a tango with a half-human and a half-robot. Standing up, I extended out my hand for him to accept. Styx slowly allowed the tips of his fingers to get used to my touch. The biggest grin appeared on his face when he clasped his hand with mine, and I was pretty sure my heart fluttered at that moment. Our impromptu dance unfolded in the sterile confines of the operating room, a dance that spoke of newfound freedom and a shared journey into the uncharted territory of human robotic existence. Amidst our laughter and the sparks of our metallic touches, I felt as if Styx and I had discovered a passion that defied the boundaries of mere friendship. Suddenly, the echoing cadence of footsteps approached the corridor outside the room, an interruption to the prevailing silence. Caught off guard by the unexpected intrusion, I stumbled, and in that moment of disarray, Styx instinctively reached out, his arm enveloping me in a protective embrace. A subtle collision of her noses caused me to wince at the proximity, realizing how dangerously close we had come to an accidental kiss. Quickly, we need to get back into our beds, Styx whispered urgently, untangling his arm to allow me to retreat. No one should find out that we've been dancing. With a swift motion, he darted back to his side, disappearing beneath the covers. As the door creaked open, I squeezed my eyes shut, keenly aware of the secret dance we had just engaged in. The hushed murmurs of Dad and Calix infiltrated the room, punctuated by the squeak of Calix's worn-out sneakers on the polished floor. His footsteps, like an unintentional musical note, added an unexpected harmony to the atmosphere. They must be tired, I heard Dad sigh, the wariness evident in his voice. What they've both gone through this week has been terrifying. I agree, Calix added. Wonder how surprised they'll be when they wake up to find you fix them with your robotics. I hope they don't freak out, Dad muttered through clenched teeth. Although, Nix, I'm sure, would find it normal. Styx might be fine since he's familiar with robotics and works as my intern. 
intern? The revelation struck me with surprise. My father had never disclosed that detail to me. His preoccupation with repairing severely injured patients at the hospital had seemingly overshadowed the revelation that Styx was more than just a friend. Stretching my arms above my head, I let out a languid yawn, opening my eyes and sitting up to find Dad and Calix grinning at me. Calix took a seat beside me, his hand resting on my human shoulder. Morning, Nix, he greeted warmly. How are you feeling? I stole a glance at my robotic arm. Better. I'm no longer in pain anymore. Well, that's good news. Dad joined us, his comforting touch on my robotic leg, a reminder of the sensory limitations I now faced. Dad's attention shifted to my monitor. Your heart rate seems to be going pretty fast for how calm you are right now. The butterflies in my stomach returned. Oh, really? I replied, straightening my posture. Dad stands up to check up on sticks. Wow, his heart is racing. Odd for him to be sleeping with this rate. Out of the corner of my eye, I saw Stick's cheek turn bright red. Embarrassed, I shift quietly in my seat. Please stop it, Dad. I blurted out nervously, hoping to deflect the scrutiny. He turns to me, a quizzical expression on his face. Pardon me? Did you say something? I laugh nervously. Never mind. Keep doing that checkup. I don't want to disrupt you. As Dad continued his examination of sticks, a sudden chill washed over me, a whisper of unease tugging at the edges of my consciousness. The room seemed to contract, the air growing thick with an indescribable tension. I exchanged a quick, puzzled glance with Calix, who raised an eyebrow in response. Without warning, an alien force seemed to seize control of my limbs, my body responding to an unspoken command. In a strange and disorienting dance, I found myself standing up, and my metallic limbs moved with unnatural precision. I tried to resist, but it was as if invisible strings were pulling me, compelling me to follow a directive beyond my will. Beside me, Styx experienced the same eerie phenomenon. His eyes widened with confusion and alarm as he, too, rose from his bed, the metallic components of his body moving in tandem with mine. The room became a stage for this surreal performance, the hum of machinery now drowned out by the disconcerting symphony of our synchronized movements. Dad and Calix stared, their expressions shifting from concern to bewilderment. Nix, Dad? What's happening? Galax asked, his voice laced with a mixture of worry and disbelief. Imprisoned by the unseen force, my vocal cords felt bound, rendering me speechless and powerless against the malevolent influence manipulating my every move. A sense of horror consumed me as my limbs, once under my own command, danced to an alien rhythm, an eerie ballet of involuntary actions. In the midst of this macabre dance, words erupted from my mouth without conscious intent. This is a test, I uttered, repeatedly, the words emerging as both a desperate plea and a fractured mantra, a feeble attempt to make sense of the inexplicable. Abruptly, as if the malevolent force had accomplished its enigmatic purpose, its grip on us was released. A sudden liberation left my limbs seeming almost boneless, and sticks and I staggered back, our movement now unshackled from the otherworldly influence. My senses, once held captive, reeled in the aftermath of the unexpected ordeal. Faintness swept over me like an unwelcome tide, and I collapsed backward, my body succumbing to the strain of the intrusion. In the nick of time, Styx lunged forward, agile and alert. His strong arms caught me before I could meet the unforgiving embrace of the floor. The sudden shift from an imposed dance to the brink of collapse left me disoriented, clinging to consciousness by a fragile thread. Whoa, great catch, Galax's voice echoed through the room, the relief evident in his words. The air crackled with the residue of tension as Styx steadied me, his grip firm and reassuring. Sticks shifted awkwardly, turning to face the shell, whose expression echoed the bewilderment etched on our faces after perplexing events unfolded. Dr. Xavier, Sticks's voice wavered with a nervous edge. What just happened? Was that supposed to be normal? The air seemed charged with uncertainty as Dad, caught in a moment of silent contemplation, directed his gaze toward the clipboard, detailing Sticks's injuries. The room, once a haven of healing, now bore witness to an unsettling revelation. No, 
Dad finally uttered, his tone carrying the weight of a truth he was reluctant to disclose. A surge of determination coursed through me, and I straightened, eager to rectify the glitch with the confidence of my coding skills. I can fix it. The problem with my skills. Dad, just show me. But he shook his head, a solemn gesture that left me unsettled. The gravity of the situation seemed to cast a shadow over his usual affable demeanor, and the air grew heavier with the unsaid. Nix, I didn't cause this, Dad confessed, his words unraveling a harsh truth. A sigh escaped him, carrying the weight of an admission that went beyond the physical confines of the operating room. Nix, someone has hacked into your robotic code to be continued.